Well, welcome to week 11 of Bible Studies for Life. We're continuing in this section that we're in right now about how to share the gospel. And the lesson this week is kind of an interesting one to take. It's an interesting direction that, that we're going. We're talking about, you know, if you're going to share the gospel, you're going to have to live the gospel. You need to live it out. It needs to be evident in your life. Now, it's not enough to just live. Uh, we have to talk. You have to speak. Words come. But, but we need to live. I, that gives credence to our message, right? It helps people to, to believe that we believe what we're saying. And so that's important. So today we're going to be looking at Colossians chapter 3 and excited about this passage. I love this passage. Let's look at the first three verses of chapter 3. It says, So if you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Okay, I want us to look at first at just a couple of things, uh, a couple of words in here, important phrases, things that God has done in your life. If you have become a Christian, here are the things that have happened in your life, okay? Um, and we won't take them necessarily, we'll take them in chronological order, maybe that'll be a way to do it. He says, you died, and you didn't physically die, right? But who you are was put to death. The old you died. You're gone, right? What, what did God do? He raised you up as a new creation, brand new, right? You have been raised with Christ. This is what's happened. And this, if you have been raised, which means that, you know, if you're a believer, and you are, if you're a believer, and you know that's who's right to believers, if you're a believer, then you have been raised with Christ. You now have a new life. You have a different life. You are not the old person. Okay, brand new person. You died and you've been raised. And he says, your life is hidden with Christ and God. Now, I like that. It's kind of an interesting phrase, isn't it? To think about what does it mean that your life is hidden with Christ in God? Have you thought about that? You know, if, uh, what do we, we hide things that we are protecting, right? That, that we're keeping keepsakes we put them in the safe space right the lockbox we keep them there so we're hiding them right to protect them uh, so that when we're hidden with christ in god means that we are protected there we're safe there you know when you give your life to christ he takes your life he holds your life you're hidden with him you're safe there. all that satan wants to do all that satan wants to say all that he wants to accuse you of you're safe with Christ. You're not going to. It's not going to be lost again, right? It's safely hidden away with Christ. Now, it doesn't mean hidden like nobody sees it and nobody knows, but hidden that you're in a safe place with Him. You are protected with Christ. That life that He has given you cannot be lost. It cannot be taken. Cannot be stolen. It is hidden away with Him. Protected away with Him. This is who we are. And so he says, since this is what God has done, okay, because this is what happened when you got saved. You died, you were raised, you're hidden away. Seek things above. Here, set your minds on things above. Hmm. Where Christ is, right? These spiritual things could say that, right? But also things that are going to last, things that are eternal, so what are the things that are eternal, that we need to be focused on, that we need to have our sights set on, those things that are eternal? You know, we spend a lot of time, as Jesus talks about, laying up treasures here on earth, right? But where are we supposed to lay up treasures? Treasures in heaven. Well, what are treasures in heaven? What are the things that last? You know, the only thing that lasts are people. People last. Right? God's word lasts. But... But all this stuff, the video, YouTube, will not be around forever, all right? These things don't last, but people last. Invest your life in people. Spend time with people. Make a difference in the lives of people. Be someone that, that um, has valued people and has lived as if you valued people and that you think people are valuable to God, that you see people as being valuable to him, important to him. Set your minds on things above. You know, Christ is not looking down, hoping that you get a new car or that you can move into a new house. He's, he's looking down, hoping that people get saved, right? That's, that's his goal. That's his aim. That's where his focus is. That should be ours too, that our focus, our aim, our goals, our values should be the same as his. This is what it means to, to seek things above, to set your minds on the things above, not on the earthly things. Right, to, to think about what is it that, that matters to God. Now, those things need to matter to me. 
And if there are things that matter to me that do not matter to God, I need to get I, I need to stop valuing those things the way I do. Not that they may not be uh, nice and in, and good things here, but they don't need to be valued above those things that really matter. We have to think about what is it really matters to God, and that's where we invest our life. That's where we invest our time and our effort. Therefore, he says, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also are to forgive. Listen, if we live in constant conflict with other people, we are doing a disservice to our testimony. We are hurting our testimony. If a church is in constant conflict, People that come to that church are not going to get a sense that the gospel is true or that it really matters to the people there because they're constantly fighting, right? If your house is in constant conflict, if your family is constantly fighting with one another, if y'all can't sit at the dinner table and have a nice conversation, then how are you going to tell other people about the difference that Christ makes in reconciliation when you can't be reconciled to your to your family members, when he can't be reconciled to your brother that you can see, how can you tell others they ought to be reconciled to God who they cannot see? Right? We we have to live in ways that honor people. And this, you know, we're God's chosen ones. We're holy and dearly loved. So we've got to we've got to grab hold of compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. These things we need in our lives if we're going to live with one another and bear testimony to the work of God in our own lives. You know, there is a sense where my my willingness to forgive is not just an appreciation for what God has done in me, but it, but an appreciation for what God has done in them, and a recognition that we're all in need of forgiveness, and that if we can't forgive one another, then we're 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 denying the reality of the universal need for forgiveness. We all need it, so we've got to. Uh, you know, forgive one another. If anyone has a grievance, just as God has forgiven you, you forgive others. Forgive people. Let the word of Christ, we're skipping a couple of verses here, but let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Okay. Let God's word dwell in you richly. Let God's word take up a residence. That's what this dwell in you. Dwell means to take up residence, to live there. Right? Go back to John 1, 14. It says, um, uh, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. He took up residence with us. Right? We need to let the word take up residence in our home. To dwell richly means that it takes over who we are. Right? And so this is the speak, the need to be in the Word, to be in a small group, to be in worship, to spend time studying God's Word, right, and listening, being taught, and gaining wisdom, admonishing one another. Boy, that's a tough word. We don't use that a lot when we think about one another. We might use that when we think about children and adults and parents, but but admonishing one another, this need for the body to be together and to, be, and to have a relationship such that we can speak the truth in love, to admonish one another, to say the hard things that have to be said, that need to be said in a loving way, but to admonish one another, encouraging one another to, to live better, to live higher, to be noble in our lives, right? And using psalms, hymns, singing to God with gratitude, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is giving your very best, giving all that you have. The call to serve Christ is not a call to mediocrity. It's a call to excellence. Not, not that we all have to perform at some high level. Not that, that everyone should know everything. No, but that we give an excellent effort in our desire to follow Christ. Everybody can give their best effort. And that's, that's the challenge for us, is that we, too often, our problem is not that we don't have desires, is that we desire too little, or we desire things that are too simple, or we don't desire the things that really are great, that are wonderful and that change lives, 
that we don't give our effort fully. We give effort to other things, but not fully to Christ, not fully to our Christian life, to our walk, to watching after that. And this is the call. And when we do that, when we live that way, we give support, we give validation to our Christian gospel message of salvation. And people want that. I, I think today in this world, people are hungering for, for real, right? For genuine, for sincere. And there's a big fight against that. There, there are a lot of people that, that try to tear down those who are real and that who are sincere. Because there is a great challenge, a threat to those who are pushing fake narratives, fake life, who are pushing, um, you know, Instagram life, all of that, they're, they're threatened by reality. They hide so often behind Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and kind of the fakeness of our life. We need real Christians, people who can show the reality of life right here. It's important, right? We live together in love. We forgive one another. We get on, right? Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this helps as you prepare, as you teach, as you study, all of that. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. Um, comment, like, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, grows our, you know, followership, whatever. We're trying to build this thing. So appreciate you watching. God bless. We'll see you next time.